Welcome to a little masterclass about the Chopin Nocturne in C sharp minor. It's a posthumous work. Chopin did not publish this work during his life. And we are not even very sure about the year of composition, but it's probably from 1830 when Chopin was about 20 years old. It's not titled Nocturne by Chopin, but it's commonly called Nocturne in C sharp minor today. It's actually very close to the uh, model of uh, Chopin's Nocturnes. And uh, mm, it's actually called uh, Lento con gran espressione. This is uh, what Chopin writes at the beginning as a tempo indication. Uh, it starts uh, with uh, a short introduction. Which is repeated another time. And then after a pause of two quarters, the main theme comes in. There are many things happening already in this nice beginning. And um, let's talk first of all about the introduction. So how to play this descending scale, which is actually interrupted by pauses within the slur. Pause, pause. It's like a little breathe. Of course, the pause is part of the melodic line, so it's not fragmenting very much the melody, it would be too much to play like this. I would rather stay within the same musical melodic tension, avoiding any accent and using the pedal, releasing the pedal very smoothly in order to create a little air between the notes but without losing the unity of the melodic shape. And how to play the repeat? Of course, uh, we have to do something different. I will not uh, plan a very uh, pre-programmed uh, different dynamics for the repeat. Of course, uh, somebody could just play as an echo the first time louder. And then pianissimo. It's a possibility, of course, not very original as an idea. Uh, I think we can actually work on the different color, changing balance, maybe underlying uh, the internal voices or the bass line the second time. For example, the first time more the top voice. And then maybe underlying also the bass line the internal voice for example or another possibility to change the shape of the phrase in this repeat it's just to create a different dynamic form for example the first time we could start piano and a little bit of crescendo the second time a little bit more but losing our strength at the end with a slight rallentando and here it comes the main theme so how to find a great melodic expression which is melancholic at the same time uh, a little bit uh, somber but also uh, full of tension. Uh, it's very important, first of all, to find the right balance between the two hands. So the left hand should be really, really soft in order to avoid any um, interference with the resonance of the long melodic line. So it's always good to focus with our ear on the resonance of the top voice 
and to place the left hand notes within the resonance. So. And if we go down with the top voice, we have to go down diminuendo, even more diminuendo with the left hand. How to control the pianissimo in the left hand? Of course, it's always better in these cases to play not with the tip of the fingers, not in the twice way, which would be too concrete, but you know, depressing the keys with a loose hand and no activity on the fingers, but rather, you know, let the finger go down uh, without pressing on the key, you know, just using the softest part of the finger and moving the hand in a way to avoid any vertical impulse, but rather horizontal touch. On the other side, on the right hand, we have to find sound which is not hard, but it's very, you know, long. So again, I would not use the simple finger movement, which is too short and would give a sound which is not long enough, but I would use the full arm and uh, trying to avoid the a vertical touch, but even here, pulling out using the natural weight of the full arm, but with a very slow movement down to the key. So, and it's very important to connect the resonance of the first note of the melody to the second, to the trillo, avoiding any accent on the next note. So. If I do this, uh, I would have an accent here, which is not nice because we are in a legato line. So let's listen to the resonance and connect the dynamic of the end of the resonance to the next note. And the trillo is a good opportunity for us to make a natural crescendo without having any accent. So the trillo starts very, very soft, but crescendo and again, at the end of the slur on the C sharp, we go up to fade out. So all together. Now, here we have something new. The harmony is not anymore of C sharp minor, but we go to C sharp major, which becomes the dominant key of F sharp. So there is more tension here and more light, so we can actually change our touch. If here I was pulling out here, I will go in the key. I will push in, gently pushing in, so having a sound which is more intense than before. And here Chopin puts three C sharp notes. One, two, three. When we found the same note in the same melody, we have to be very careful, avoiding to play the same note in the same way. Because if I play like this, you see, I'm losing the poetry of this passage. So the three C sharp have to be played in three different ways. For example, mm, so I can deal with the touch in or out, with the dynamic less or more, and with the duration, with the tempo, with the rubato, in order to give the three different approaches to these three different C sharp. And then again, we have the third phrase where we go back. I mean, emotionally, we had an opening here, more hope in a way, but suddenly this new hope didn't reach any happiness. And here we go back to our somber situation especially in this new chord with the 
natural A at the bass with a new color, so again, losing hope. So here I really do another color change. I don't use my long lever, but I reduce the pressure and go up. And here another trillo. Okay. Brings me back to the first phrase again. Now, there is no time to watch to all of this, but uh, it's just to give you an insight of what's our job of you know, creating an interpretation starting from emotional meanings. See you soon.